community in this knowledge sharing platform to share my views and thoughts in on uh, the leadership skills for teachers in uh, higher education institutions. I hope uh, the session is very interesting and very interactive also. So basically to start with, um, I'll make it as very big. Yes. Yes, full screen. So uh, to start with, if you see, you know, why teacher leadership? We are knowing about the roles of teachers, yes, responsibilities of teachers. Why teacher leadership? Because basically, the idea behind this is teacher leadership is not actually very new. It is quite old. But recently, it has been transformed. Because in the past, if you see, the teacher leadership roles have been limited in scope. And uh, it has been established as a prerogative of the you know, college administrators. Only they are the leaders. But right now, that is not the case. So teachers have long served as team leaders, department chairs, association leaders, and curriculum developers. Because I am you know, in content creating. I do a lot of work on uh, that uh, particular uh, side. So in these roles, if you see, the teachers have often served as representatives rather than leaders. OK, so you know this is as per the research. So let's try to identify what is the difference between a representative and what is the difference between a leader. Right, if you see like that, in the traditional functions, if you see coordinating activities, disseminating the information from one uh, you know, uh, department or from one teacher, you have to pass the information to the other, like ensuring the implementation of the administrative directives. And then uh, you know, going for as the department chairs, like even for the research, you can you know, be the judge trying to uh, evaluate the research papers. There are a lot of roles which the teacher plays. Okay, But actually, what is required right now, the urgency of the moment is the digital teacher leaders. Okay, and digital teacher leadership 2025 is paused to revolutionize the educational landscape through the integration of cutting edge technologies. These leaders will leverage artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ma uh, are you moving the slides, ma'am? The slides are not moving. No? No, ma'am. Okay. I'll make it entire screen. That should be fine. Yes. I was explaining the this particular slide, telling that uh, these leaders will leverage AI-driven personalized learning and uh, they are more into understanding the immersive tools to create engaging and focusing more on student-centered classrooms. So basically, you know, today's teacher leaders, their role will be very pivotal in fostering innovation. Uh, I'll give you one exercise on this uh, so that you can do it along with me. And more on collaboration, that is how you get along well with your uh, peer groups and focusing more on continuous improvement among educators and students alike. So in this moment, I would like to share with you three inspiring stories, which has made very significant impact through their leadership. And these three stories are not just mere stories, live examples, I should say. There is a leader called Sara Patel, OK? And uh, Sara Patel, if you see, she is a uh, veteran mathematics teacher at a diverse urban school noticed a high significant gap in the student performance across different classes. So to address this, she initiated a peer mentoring program where experienced teachers would mentor uh, you know, newer and struggling colleagues. So how many of us do take this kind of initiatives? So Sara conducted irregular, I mean, sorry, regular workshops focusing on innovative teaching methods. So we have innovative teaching pedagogy methods like role playing, simulation methods. So a lot of classroom management techniques she focused on and the integration of the technology in the lessons. Over a time, this collaborative effort led to the improved teaching practices school wide. Student engagement performance notably increased, reflected in a 20 percent rise in the standardized test scores. So how many of us do practice? Because students, if you see, they need uh, you know, these kind of skills that is need to be developed in them. 
basically the cognitive skills, then the social skills, affective skills, and the psychomotor skills. So cognitive, if you see uh, here, uh, you know, if the skills are not up to the marks, because this is a very alarming uh, need, or I should say, which uh, requires a lot of effort from the teachers to improvise the cognitive skills of the students, because we have a very standardized set of the education system, which gives us, you know, asks us to go ahead. You know, this is how it has to happen. So there we find a lot of differences and social skills to communicate with the peers. Yes. And effective skills, if you see, uh, you know, we have to nurture positive attitudes. Recently, I read in the newspaper, it is yesterday, it's not very old. Uh, one of the students committed uh, suicide for, uh, you know, the parents not obliging to his uh, request. You know, small, small things, you know, uh, the students take a very big, uh, you know, measurements. So unnecessary things which are, you know, happening, you know, for small things, you know, how to handle small things so that they should be taught all these things okay and the psychomotor skills if you see uh taking uh you know good sleep i have right now i can't say uh, you know couple of students are there who are not sleeping in the night because of using excessive you know gadgets they don't get sleep and then it uh, becomes a very big hit on the teachers because assessments are not being done i'm, I'm talking about assignments so they don't uh, complete it on time then assessments becomes a problem so all these things need to be taken care. And when you look into the roles of the teachers here, I have given as a cycle 12 roles, major roles that is to be played by the teachers. And here I would like to give the second example. The second example could be the innovator. And if you see the innovator, there we have this teacher called Rahul Singh, a sincere science teacher in the rural Indian school I'm talking about, saw a potential of technology to enhance education in undeserved areas so what did he do despite the limited resources he advocated for and successfully obtained funding to implement digital classrooms so we apply for our own you know basis i have to you know improvise in my fdp in my mdp management development programs let me get some funding programs we are working on that but this guy this person focused on uh, getting the funding programs for the school children right now, you know, Rahul trained his fellow teachers on using these tools effectively, focusing on interactive and engaging teaching methods. So this particular initiative, if you see, has transformed the learning experience, making it more engaging and very accessible. His efforts resulted, you know, if you see 30 percent in over a period of two years, the results have increased and the pass rates have increased. Another example I can give is the advocate, Maria Rodriguez. Maria, if you see, basically an English teacher at a suburban high school, recognized the need for culturally responsive teaching in order to address the diverse backgrounds of her students. So she took uh, the completely, you know, training the students for cultural competencies, you know, and she conducted a lot of cultural competency programs for the teachers first, basically. Uh, advising them and you know giving them a lot of suggestions in that emphasizing the importance of understanding the and respecting the students cultural identities you know we have this white brown and black the differentiations and on various you know the genders so maria organized a lot of workshops how many of us do organize workshops i know a couple of faculty in certain institutions very highly paid but you know focuses only on teaching how many of us do focuses on you know focus on uh, this kind of you know um, initiating to conduct workshops workshops is very much required every single teacher conducts a workshop say for example in a department we have 12 teachers 12 workshops you conduct each one one more than enough more than sufficient you know like you know for example uh, artificial intelligence or for teachers what are the different tools and techniques that is really required for teachers? You know, one workshop you conduct, it is going to benefit the entire, you know, community of the teachers. So this Maria organized workshops, invited guest speakers, and then developed resources to help the teachers incorporate various cultural awareness into their curricula. So 15% increase was seen in the overall student satisfaction. If you see also, there was a percentage of increase. And uh, I think, you know, these stories illustrate how a teacher leader can drive meaningful change through peer mentoring. Okay, you can do all these things through peer mentoring because peer mentoring is one of the 
major role as a teacher. The other role as shown in the picture, can you see? Digital content creator is another role. A practical teacher is a normal teacher, normal instructor. Uh, say, for example, I'll show you this. This, if you see in this particular uh, diagram, the modes of teaching. Generally, we use only chalkboard, uh, probably a little bit uh, of, you know, if you're having smart boards, you're using the technology. OK, fine. You know, participatory method, probably using the case studies or uh, maybe, you know, simulation games. And if you're doing it in offline, suppose if it is a distance learning program, then you have the capsule form, you know, you put everything in the Google suite, G suite, we call it, and uh, you make use of the technology and give it. Suppose this, again, if it is offline learning, then you have a synchronous and asynchronous, you know, kind of learning. Blended learning is there, you know, where you have, you know, this both virtual platform and the offline classes put both together. And otherwise, we have something called as experiential learning. In our case, if you see uh, in the lesson plan, I have the first one to eight, we have a normal, uh, I mean, regular classes, concept classes. The ninth one will always be because nine fives are uh, 45. For us, it is 45 hours uh, for one particular subject. So the ninth hour, if you see, it will be an experiential learning. It will be either a case study or it will be a role play or a simulation exercise or, uh, you know, gamification. Right now, we have introduced that. So anything which is very interesting for the students and whatever the concepts that has been applied for eight cases, eight classes that we try to, you know, incorporate in the ninth one. So there again, we have a practical sessions and students are sent for internship. A lot of experiments, you know, could be conducted because in management, it is very difficult you know, to have experimentations, you know, to be conducted. If it's engineering, then yes, it is easy. If it is the te technical course, yes, it is easy. But this is a professional course. So here doing, you know, these kind of experimentations is a little tough and very challenging for us. So we have simulated learning. And so either it could be lab based or field based you can have. And uh, I think uh, you can see the six leadership styles, which is given by Goldman. So here, as a teacher leader, either you can be very commanding. All the uh, you know, styles cannot be incorporated at the same point of time. Each style, based on the situation, you can incorporate. If the student is not listening to you, so there you need a directive you know, uh, style, which is called as commanding. So demands immediate compliance. The models are operandi, if you see, immediately, you know, yes, I want this report, you know, by evening, 4 o'clock. Yes, you can get it done. Otherwise, you know, a visionary leadership where, you know, you say in the class, I'm very happy with the class. You guys are, you know, highly cooperating. And I want these things to be done. How things are moving on? Are you happy with the class? Any concepts which is left over, you can share with me. So visionary, creating a lot of, you know, uh, the far uh, things which happens, you know, going to happen ahead, you can share with them often by via storytelling. There are methods to, you know, get connected with the students. So that is one. Affiliative is another style, leadership style, which creates harmony and builds emotional bonds. Because uh, these days where the students are more having, uh, I should say, the affiliation is towards the gadgets and, uh, you know, the electronic items, you can try to pull them into the class on various, you know, different methods, you know, approaching them, giving them, you know, taking them, them to the ground, having some fun activities. So that is one. And the democratic is, you know, asking them to speak, speak your mind, you know, please share with us what you think. You know, the, I, I think I've given a question also, the style in a face. So in the democratic style, what do you think? What is your idea about this? How many of us ask in the class? Come, finish the portions, go. So uh, it is like, you know, because we have to complete, you know, I have only 45 hours. I have only this. You know, somewhere we need to, you know, slow down, try to build in the trap so that it will be helpful for us. See, one thing is, you know, when we are having this kind of wrap uh, as an alumni, they would come back to us. And you can give them alumni talk. So those kind of things, you know, we need to think through. And the next one is a pace setting. Pace setting, uh, you know, uh, just follow me. I will do, I will demonstrate and show it to you. It's the same way you can do it. So you're setting a high standards for the performance. I do, I, though the candidate, the student might be performing only 50%, you still keep on telling, you know, I expect a lot from you. You know, you have the potential to do. So let me, you know, just show you a sample that you can, you know, do it. So these are 
some of the ways where you try to uh, you know make the students understand the next one is a simple one which is coaching but all the i think physical education uh, teachers do that but we also in the class must you know follow the thing because coaching is very important it develops actually the people for the future you know you show something and then you ask them to do that on their own try this so all this you know gives you a very very uh, positive you know things if you see the overall impact on the climate uh, the first one commanding will be very negative because you keep on telling you know what they need to do so that will over a period of point it will be very frustrating for the uh, students whereas if you see coaching will be very very positive so this these are six major you know leadership styles now at this juncture i would like to ask you a few questions and maybe anamika ma'am can you know respond or anybody uh, moti sir is also there so which leadership quality focuses on understanding and addressing the needs of individual students uh, choices collaboration adaptability relationship building and problem solving so which leadership quality focuses on understanding and addressing the needs of individual students sir any answers can we be more interactive so that yes any answers you can put it in the chat box okay let me see the chat box okay very good revathi ma'am has posted a relationship building so it is relationship building yes so uh, the next one a teacher who inspires and motivates students to achieve their full potential exhibits which leadership quality a resilience b is visionary thinking c is inspirational motivation and uh, d is strategic planning because planning in the beginning with a lot of uh, ideas is equally important so what's the answer yes some of them are inspirational motivation is the one not visionary thinking uh, because uh, if you see the quality of a leader is basically you know when we start defining it is defining the leadership itself says you have to influence your followers so basically it is an inspirational motivation that inspires it is already there which inspires and motivates the students to achieve their full potential so uh, let's have a look at this diagram this diagram is a subset two sets are there in between we have the subset so the merging of the roles of a leader can you see leader is here teachers is here so who is a teacher leader you know one who is ready to work preparation makes all the preparation listens to the needs of the you know uh, students they are uh, you know they reflective practitioners so if i do this what will be the consequences very simple you know when we are not thinking of the consequences i have people or there are people you know who says that madam i can only teach or who is involved only in teaching other non academic or you know non teaching workload who will do so there is a lot of you know uh, thoughts and when it comes to the performance appraisal if you see it is not the teaching alone which is considered teaching workload is but one particular you know uh, thing aspect uh, the non teaching workload is another particular aspect and in the non particular non teaching workload there are many things i can show you i don't know whether it is visible uh, can you see this is the one which i am showing you here if you see uh, i am showing you the uh, you know we have lot of things one is business conclave we are supposed to prepare uh, you know students co curricular activities we have the boas to be con uh, done consultancy to be done board of examiners boe is to be done uh, internship is to be done seminar is to be done societal projects needs to be done uh, and research grant coordinators are required competency profiling you know for this is required fdp coordinator alumni coordinator outbound training coordinator i can go on reading you know nba national board of accreditation coordinator lot of coordinators you know innovation council coordinators each member of the team is expected to perform five to six roles together 
So in a department, if you say, for example, you have 180 students, then we have, you know, a minimum requirement is 18 teachers. So, you know, uh, maybe if you are permitted, you can have 18, but there will be minimum at least 14. Or if the teacher number is less also, so based on that. So minimum, how many roles? Nine to, uh, you know, 10 roles you are supposed to play. So how will you manage this? So the challenges faced by teachers is basically, you know, personal gains. What would I, you know, gain by doing this? Uh, in our performance appraisal system, we had certain, you know, uh, queries. I'm not talking about my institution. Generally, in the performance appraisal system, if you see, we have certain challenges where only certain things will be considered. Say, for example, research will be considered giving, uh, you know, very highest points. Whereas if you see the administration, it may not be considered or teaching may not be considered because teaching is a regular teaching. You know, you are being appointed to be a teacher. Workload is this much. So you have to go ahead. So personal gains. What do I gain by doing this? That's a very big question mark by the teachers and time management. Another very great uh, frustration I could see in today's teachers. You know, this is my observation because being as an industrial psychologist, I could see a lot of you know things that teachers are not able to manage their time. OK, and then intellectual and professional growth. What do I do? What do I gain by, you know, writing this research? Because in India, if you see uh, the research as such, you know, it is basically, you know, whatever has been done in the past, we are just trying to do it a little bit better. Nothing new, nothing innovative is coming up. OK, so that is one major challenge. So what is my growth in this? And, you know, uh, clearly, are, you, are we defining the rules? That is another one based on the college culture if it is not permitting you to work then you cannot work then decreased you know uh, isolation and confronting the obstacles you know there are ways i know a, one, a couple of faculty in the you know other colleges so where we interact one of the guys he used to get tensed for everything this i wanted by two o'clock you know because his uh, duty is dependent on or his completion of duty is dependent on the uh, the others when such things are there, he will say, by 4 o'clock, I want this. By 5 o'clock, I want this. No, 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 I want it right now. So all these things, you know, he does not have any good relationship with the peer group. So all these things, when it is there, how it is possible for us, madam, you are telling so many roles needs to be accomplished. It is easy to say, but it is very difficult to, uh, you know, follow. Yes, I do agree. But it is a great challenge, but we can do it, you know, in the following set of ways, which I will give you some tips in this. OK, one prominent Indian teacher, if you see, who's using the artificial intelligence tools is Dr. Ashok Goyal, a professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology, basically an Indian. Uh, and, uh, you know, he developed Jill Watson, an AI teaching assistant to help and manage uh, and also to respond to students' queries in his online courses. He himself uh, is, uh, you know, come out with this app. So Dr. Goyal's innovative use of AI, if you see, in the education, has you know has a significant attention and has demonstrated a potential for ai to enhance teaching and learning experiences i have, we have seen four different examples how they have used and all the you know methods all the styles you know i have shown you six leadership styles all these six leadership styles cannot be used at one point of time say for example in this diagram i'm just showing this is a contingency theory situational based leadership if your students are not following you, you know, very prominently, then, you know, uh, diligently, if they are not following you, then you can follow this, you know, uh, D4, uh, where we call it as S4. If that is not very high, if the followers is D1, then you can follow the S4. That is, you know, very low supportive and low directive behavior is there, uh, which we can be you know calling it as a delegating delegating comes only when your students are uh, very high and they know what to do when to do and how to do so you can delegate it you just simply delegate that is s4 supporting is where they know how to do but they need some kind of push from your end so that point of time you can support them giving the necessary resources okay if they don't have a lab for example in our case we have we are teaching something called as an excel advanced excel and uh, the lab has to be shared by all the departments. So there's a, it, it's really a very big challenge. So what do we do? We book, I book my, you know, uh, labs uh, one month ahead in the uh, calendar of events only. I, I give it off. And then I say 25th and 27th, I need my, you know, lab. 
so the other departments and take it very much approval you know from through mail no oral approvals so take it written approval so that you know you know very sure that lab will be there and then i train my students you know in the lab also there is nothing to worry about it so i have a very good you know lab manual so from the lab manual i teach the children and then tell them you know don't worry about it this is how it has to be these are the formulas which you know if you give this will be the outcome so when uh, when everything is very clear and thing, you just have to push give them a little support okay not to worry about it and then coaching coaching is something very different like every now and then you have to give them you know a little bit of support from your end and coach them literally you know uh, making them to stay with you and try to give them so in our uh, case if you see that we have something called as language lab here uh, students who are very, uh, I mean, or little bit poor in uh, communication. Uh, sometimes, we, as we have students coming from diverse backgrounds, uh, cultural differences will be there. So they would have taught uh, in their, you know, undergraduate in their regional languages. So a little bit of coaching is required. Yes, what do I do? I take them to the language lab and coach them. Uh, we have various varieties of labs. So we coach them. And if students are not listening to you, then you give them the directing. And almost every Bharat Ratna, if you see, awardee is not only a social reformer, but also a great teacher. I have a very long list here. From 1954 to you know 2015, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, we have, you know, all of them were teachers. All of them were teachers. You know, truly uh, speaking, uh, these kind of, you know, the Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian award is typically conferred upon individuals who have made exceptional contributions to the nation in various fields, including literature, arts, science and public service. While there isn't a specific, you know, Bharat Ratna teachers award, but if a teacher were to be conferred with Bharat Ratna, then it would signify, you know, their extraordinary impact and influence on education and society. So this is my humble you know, request. I wish everyone who is attending this particular session will receive an award in future for various you know, categories. So that is also there. So here I have a case study for you. Now, in a suburban high school, Ms. Johnson has experienced you know, as a science teacher, initiated a peer mentoring program done to improve the teaching strategies across departments by leading uh, the professional development workshops and fostering a collaborative environment, she significantly increased the student engagement and academic performance. All is agreed? Yes. Now, her leadership not only you know, enhanced instructional quality, but also promoted a culture of continuous improvement. So it's like everybody, you know, you feel the moment you feel, you know, you come to college, you feel, okay, this is my college, I'm coming. Uh, and, you know, this is my place. So, yes. She has in, uh, done that continuous improvement among her colleagues. So as a result, the school saw 15% uh, rise in the standard test scores. Now my question, and that too, it is an analytical question. How did Ms. Johnson's peer mentoring program specifically contribute to the observed increase in student engagement and academic performance? Just post your answers in the you know, chat box. Let us discuss on that. So observed increase. She has done the peer mentoring program, okay? And she has to, you know, done something very specifically to contribute to the increase in student engagement and academic performance. So what could be the methods, techniques, or the tools that she would have adopted? Any idea? Let me see how many answers are coming. Yes, I go to the screen. Yes, here, chat box. Okay, continuous effort, team effort. Yes. Okay. Any other answers? Answer is there actually in the case study itself. It is there in the case study itself. It is there in the case study as a peer mentoring. I can show you. This is the one, peer mentoring. And the first two lines you can see initiated a peer mentoring program. How many of us initiate? It's very, you know, it's actually, you know, need of the hour. 
Peer mentoring is a process where experienced individuals provide guidance, support, and knowledge to less experienced peers to help them develop their skills and improve the performance. So through this, this is one of the best method that she has improved and she has shown the results also. Now, we have some hazards in the workplace. You know, uh, troubleshooters we might have, or uh, say, for example, how do we call troublemakers? Yes. So say, for example, there are individuals who love the power of begin in charge. Yes, I have this particular seat. Uh, you know, so I have the power. I can do anything. And there are people who fail to listen to others with respect to experience. I know what is to be done. I have 23 years of work experience and then fail to organize. There are people who keep pending every day the workload. If you keep pending you know, things, then it, one day it will become a very big burden for you. And there are faculty members. I have to keep them reminding. Their work, I have to remind. If there are 13 people, because I'm leading the department, so all the 14 of them have to do their roles and responsibilities. Yes, if they're doing on their own, it is well and good. It is appreciated. And if they don't do, then it is my duty to you know keep on reminding them. Yes, it, it is really, is it necessary? And there are some of the teachers who goes into uh, you know bias with the students or get too much involved in too many things at one point of time. Frustration from disappointed you know, others in the group. A very big blow. You know, all these creating so much mess in the organization. Yes. So when frustration is there, what do you do? What, what is the solution actually? Because I keep hearing, you know, from the faculty members, uh, both who are coming as examiners, we, you know, outside external examiners do come. Oh, so much workload, ma'am. You know, we have to spend even on Saturdays, we have to come. And all that. According to sections, if you see 19 and 25 of Right to Education Act, the minimum working hours for teachers in India is, you know, demarcated at 25 hours per week. So this is inclusive of preparation time, which is divided into seven to eight hours for six days a week. So this minimum requirement varies based on the authority of the state governments. Despite the working hours, they spend much more time to go on to become the inspirational teachers. So those are the inspirational teachers who becomes the teacher leaders in future. So now I want an answer now. OK, so what is the key characteristic of effective digital teacher leadership? Whether it is authoritarian decision making, resistance to change, a teacher who embraces technology and innovation, or minimizing communication. Please post your answers. What is the key characteristic of effective digital leadership? Is exactly embracing technology and innovation. Which of the following best describes digital transformation in organization? Transition from traditional marketing to word of mouth. Shift from manual processes to technology driven processes. Moving from the hierarchical structures to flat management. Focusing solely on uh, in person customer interactions. Which of the following best describes digital transformation in organizations? No, no, not shift. Yes, it is actually. Uh, yes, shift from manual processes to technology driven processes. This is the answer. OK, yeah. OK, how can digital teacher leaders promote the collaboration within their teams? The choices are by restricting access to online tools, by using digital platforms for communication and project management, by limiting the use of social media, by maintaining strict and office work policies. Will it work? I don't know. How can digital teacher leaders promote collaboration within their teams? Yes, one answer is right by using digital platforms for communication and project management. So we are learn to use, or we should learn how to use the digital platforms. All said and done, we are using for various other, you know, chat GPT and all, we are using for various other purposes. But the right usage has to be there. So basically, uh, if you're talking about a teacher, leader, you know, skills which are required for 
today's digital era, there are four major types of educational leadership. So one is a servant leadership. You know, you would have read uh, Moses, you would have read Jesus, you know, how they follow. They were great examples to their disciples and they have asked the disciples to in turn go and, you know, behave, you know. So it's basically you do and show. You do and show and the followers follow accordingly. The transactional is our leaderships, are the teachers who once maintains what is the uh, you know status quo or how it is to be done. I'm maintaining things. The other kind of the teacher leaders are emotional leaders, where uh, EI you know emotional intelligence will be very high, and they would like to take care of the you know that's it's called as a uh, people oriented leaders. We have production oriented leaders and people oriented leaders, right? So they will be more of uh, you know people oriented leaders. The last one is a transformational leadership, which we, which is the need of the R. So transformational leaders, if you see, they will uh, promote student centric uh, education. They will focus on learner friendly, you know, teaching approaches. Anytime you can call them, anytime you can, you know, they, they, they'll be, you know, very friendly and you can approach them and implement interdisciplinary approach because here, you know, we have a lot of apprehensions. Students, when it comes to the interview process, they tell we will not do marketing financed students they will tell ma'am it's a marketing job hr uh, you know students will though we are sending it the jd job description is hr job description is related to finance but by the end of the day by the end of the day what am i doing um, though i'm head of the department but still i'm also promoting right i'm ensuring my program is run very well it's sold very well by the end of the day even i'm doing marketing right so they do not know understand the uh, you know the integration of different domains so that idea and that uh, concept should be taught by the teachers and uh, we have the space setting leadership and coaching leadership yes if you see ugc they have introduced the academic bank of credits abc so this helps the faculty to manage and check the credits earned by the students we already you know we also create abc id uh, you know academic bank of uh, credits you know the ID after you know their permanent USN number comes from the students from the you know admission department if it comes the moment it comes we also do that so this is basically introduced to promote the student centric education and it will allow the students to learn the best courses of their interest and it will enable the students to learn at their own space so there will be multiple exits multiple entries you know pointing during the higher education tenure tenure and uh, PDP how many of us do PDP I don't know but uh, as per NEP, PDP courses, you know, which is given by IGNO and UGC, we need to, you know, enroll for that and uh, try to do their assignments. And uh, a small test will be there that also we can do. NEP 2020, which is, you know, Swayam MOOC courses. For us, it is compulsory. In one semester, we are supposed to do two courses. So, and it is not uh, based on your subjects. If my subject is industrial psychology, I have to use something on HR analytics. I have to use something on you know business analytics so these are some of the subjects we pick it up and you know try to complete along with the students so it's a learning both for students as well as for teachers so this is one and if you see here this diagram where the teacher leader efficacy if you see whatever is the principal's leadership style is being created in the entire college yes and teacher leaders work is also based on whatever the guidelines which is given by you know of course ugc or aact you know the bigger boards uh, which is being translated again from the principal sir or principal madam to us and then we understand our roles and accordingly so it's, it's a cascading effect can you see it, it will come one after the other which means that principal's leadership style influences the teacher leader efficacy so as simple as that and here again i have questions don't tell me, you know, because it's more, I want it to be more interactive. You can just unmute and, you know, you can tell, which is the answer. What is one critical aspect of, uh, you know, digital leader le uh, leadership in 2025? Exclusively using traditional textbooks or integrating AI-driven uh, personalized learning tools or reducing the use of technology in classrooms, limiting professional development opportunities. Yes, I think all of us are giving the same answers integrating ai driven personalized learning tools yes which strategy is most effective for digital teacher leaders to enhance a student engagement in 2025 implementing one size fits all teaching methods 
like a capsule one size this is what i have i have a big box file so in the box file if you see i have something called as questionnaires exercises tools methods and uh, case studies so i have you know made the segregation and i will use it you know that one box file keeps me you know if any teacher is on leave i can go and engage the class I can, and i want to do it for my own class yes so that preparation time before your lesson plan if the preparation is been done then it is easy you don't have to have that panic attack what am i going to do you know now i have a class no a well prepared uh, you know uh, materials can help you to give a better lecture in the class so the answer for this is using the immersive technologies like virtual and augmented reality uh, vr and ar here i just want to minimize this and show you what is vr and ar so i hope this is you know uh, see augmented reality and virtual reality tools this is again again i'm repeating it's the need of the r in education can help the students learn by adding depth to lessons and bringing the outside world into the classroom there is something called as wonder scope this is an ar augmented reality app that can be used for distance learning in case you know you're uh, putting it then we have this 3d bear this is an uh, app which combines learning with vr and 3d scanning and it's good for remote classes z space is there co space is there eon reality is there this is actually a company that specializes in vr and ar learning applications including avr platform which allows anybody to use this learning without the coding knowledge. It is easy. Jigspace is there. This is, again is an app. Merge Cube is there. So you can just take a pic of that or I'll put this link, you know, so that you, it will be very helpful for you to understand what is VR and AR based, you know, learning. I'll put it in the group. Yes. I can put it in the group. Yes, I have copied option B, yes, B, yes. So please kindly go through that because uh, it, it's, it's very essential that we learn and use these, you know, tools. This is, they are called as immersive technologies. Okay. And this is very much effective for the digital leaders, digital teachers. And uh, yeah, some of the major problems currently faced by higher education system in India. But this reminds me of one more uh, article which I wanted to show you. I'll show you. It has come. Uh, it's today. Very, very uh, AI tools. Yes, popular, innovative. Yes. Seven Bs. LinkedIn article. It has been posted. Transforming the Indian education system. Is it possible? I don't know. But a call for skill-based learning is, you know, uh, been asked for. We rank number one in population, which makes us more responsible for producing best human talent for the country. The Indian education system, long evaluated for heavy resilience and theoretical knowledge in repetition learning, is terrible, you know, it does lead to reform. Okay, I'm not reading the entire article, but I will just show. And uh, the drawbacks of our education system, if you see, the syllabus is mostly constructed for theory only. And it is not updated frequently. Some of the universities, if you see, updated for once in four years, updated for once in five years, I should say. Some of the universities, I don't want to mention, updated for 10 years. So in our case, ours is an autonomous institution. We are updating every year. And uh, the other drawbacks, if you see, it is mostly based on lectures, periods, which is very monotonous. There is no scope for new in, uh, inventions. Our education system does not allow discoveries in the curriculum. Repetition and research, if you see, you know, experiments from ages. Still people are doing, ma'am, can I do, you know, satisfaction, you know, survey of employees in so-and-so company? 10,000, 20,000, I don't know, 40, 50,000, you know, uh, research methods are available, you know, in identifying the satisfaction system. Yeah. Our system is based on the British system because they, they are emphasized on the clerical type of education which was their need, which is still we are following the same. Teachers in India emphasize remembering and writing the concepts more than understanding and comprehending. We are able to write. So Indian education system is not too rigid. 
the curriculum is exactly outdated. The teachers in India rarely update and upgrade themselves. You know, I'm not going deeper into this, but you know, it's very pathetic. So let us see the recommendations. Okay. So what are the recommendations are? The emphasizing the need for practical and skill-based learning. It's very much required. So uh, in a skill-based learning, when you're talking about, you know, uh, critical thinking, problem-solving abilities, knowledge in real-world scenarios. So I will give you, you know, integrating new technologies, introducing the practical work. Uh, in my simple subjects, say, for example, I'm handling uh, HR. I have something called as a record book. So if you see the record book, you will tell, you know, it is only for science. No, I have. So in the record book, there are two. This side allows them to stick the pictures, pictures of the HR leaders, pictures of, you know, some of the questions, latest articles. If you just go to Google and ask for anything, there is something called as a news. How many of us read newspapers? Don't tell me, ma'am, we don't have time. See, if you just ask anything, say, for example, I'm asking, you know, uh, any kind of thing okay i'm asking on hr analytics analytics i'm just typing it out i'm showing you here if you see you have all you have images we have news click on the news immediately it comes what is there in the news you know see people matters india has posted that transforming data into action navigating the hr analytics in high growth organization how this can be done immediately i'm getting an updated one on who, who is conducting, you know, the particular, you know, um, uh, say, for example, it is a article. This is in India Times. I have now India Times, which I'm showing, driving organizational structure, uh, I mean, success with HR analytics in conversation with someone. So this person, what what is he, you know, telling? You can take it to the class. So please click, click the, you know, news. You will get immediately all the materials. This is one way of doing it. Another way I will show you. This I have discussed with the you know uh, problems. This I'm not touching upon. Great leaders are there. Yes, you can see a lot of leaders. Uh, I wanted to give you you know more. Before that, I wanted to give you one particular scenario. Yes. Now this is a case based you know uh, scenario. You can try like this you know in your class for imbibing the innovative skills of the students. Say for example, I'm giving you here. You are a high school teacher or say a college teacher implementing AI tools to improve student learning outcomes. Your school has provided you all the various you know uh, AI educational tools. But the data which I'm providing you, you have a class of 30 students. 15 students are performing below the grade level in uh, say in mathematics or in management, science, yes, whatsoever the subject may be. 10 students are performing grade level. Five students are excelling above the grade. Now, the attendance records, if you see, on an average, the attendance rate is 90%, with five students having less than 80% attendance. Def definitely, we will have, you know, some, there will be exceptions. Engagement level, if you see, 40 students are engaged, 20 students are not at all engaged. Part performance, if you see, 10% improvement in the test scores has happened because of your personalized tutoring. You would have conducted some uh, tutorial classes. We have something called as a coaching class. So in the coaching class, we, you know, identify the slow learners and we provide the teaching for them. So now my question to you is every participant, I mean, all of you have 10 minutes. Just close your eyes, quietly write down as many ideas as possible to solve this challenge. We have this challenge. What is the challenge? 15% of the students are not performing. So what will be, you know, below the grade level? What is that you will do in order to ensure to pull up that 15 to the above, you know, 10 or 20, or pull pull them up to so that they uh, do it on an average, or at least above average, a little above average. What are the methods you will, uh, you know, ensure? Because the college is giving you all the facilities. Assuming. Okay, now what will you do? Okay, this is okay. Okay, as many ideas to solve the problems. Done. I agree with you. There are some of you are giving very good ideas. But I would like to discuss with you some of the AI tools, which is very useful. One is grading and assessment tools. There is something called as a grade scope. This is an AI-driven tool which helps to automate grading various type of assessments from handwritten essays to programming assignments. 
it identifies actually it saves the teachers significant time and provides a detailed feedback to the students very nice right turnitin many of you would have been knowing by now and then if you see the personalized learning platforms khan academy is there dreambox is there right classroom management and engagement if you see edmodo is very very useful an ai powered platform that facilitates communication between the teachers the students and parents it also provides the resources and recommendations based on class performance and engagement we have something called as content creation and curation yes canvas is there canva for education this tool uh, you know uses ai to help the teachers creatively visually appealing educational materials very colorful it is and it offers templates design suggestions resources tailored for educational purposes then we have you know for tutoring and support third space learning is there this is another ai driven tutoring services that focuses on uh, providing personalized math tutoring it adapts lessons to the students pace and learning style some of the um, apps if you see we have to pay but you check you know do a little bit of research a small research and try to ensure because nothing wrong in paying and getting you know two or three where you will be the master you will be the role model you will be the, the favorite teacher for the students you know i bet you know somewhere you know where we make a difference among the other teachers and based on administrative efficiency this i'm using power school i'm using uh, which is very useful for me you know where i can manage the students data on and off from my placement they will be asking ma'am uh, we want uh, uh, students above 60% ma'am uh, these students have not attended the training sessions i want only those who have attended so like this we have various you know uh, requirements from the placements from you know the language uh, you know teachers so we have to i have to give keep the data ready so this is very much you know it is helping me in preparing the attendance grading and reporting and then we have uh, kurzweil 3000 this is an ai driven assistive technology tool that supports the students with reading difficulties some of them will struggle literally you know providing the text to speech it helps and uh, translation and study aids okay these are all some of the you know labster code.org right lab carnegie learning i'll share the ppt with you so please kindly go through and uh, you know give me your feedback right sale education this is again a literacy platform personalizes for english and personalizes reading experiences and it The progress, how much you do. There are a lot of online, you know, and uh, especially for uh, time savings. If you see a study by McKinsey Company found that AI tools can reduce the time teachers spend on administrative tasks up to thirty percent, allowing more time for direct student engagement. I have prepared the reports. You know, if you could see from Chat GPT, certain reports I have prepared. I don't, uh, you know, cut copy paste to anywhere else, but I just use it for my own personal, you know, things. so that i can understand the students you know performances accordingly i can call immediately i will call the thing is you know immediately i'll call back to the parents telling you know your student performance what performance is little less kindly focus on that so instead of calling in the nth moment and giving an alarm for everybody it gives us you know for me a better way to deal with all the stakeholders that's what i meant to say so these ai tools are transforming the education by providing personalized learning experiences right so to conclude trying to pin down what makes an effective teacher to be a leader can be a little more you know uh, it's like trying to eat soup with a fork it's not that possible okay but a group of academics can come up with what looks like a good list so no one approach is right for all the leaders most effective technique is we need to use all of this you know the three types or the four types six leadership styles which i have you know mentioned you can use the mixture of that also and leadership involves skills that are learnable and we do not have to be born knowing how to lead so how to be a better teacher reaching the students in the 21st century being able to connect with the students authentically is just one of the skills teachers needs to be very effective receiving the feedback avoiding bias and teaching the students in an online forum can also help with professional growth so thank you for the wonderful time that you all have given me any doubts you can reach out to roskavitha14 at gmail.com r o s e k a v i t h a 14 at gmail.com so kindly share your opinion and ideas and any questions we are open